Hello and welcome to this tutorial video on using the PS match2 command to implement propensity score matching in Stata. My name is Chris Curran and I'm an assistant professor of public policy at the UMBC School of Public Policy. In a previous video I talked a little bit about the value of propensity score matching as a way of addressing selection bias when trying to estimate the effects of a policy or intervention. In this video I'll briefly introduce one of the most common commands used to implement propensity score matching in the statistical software Stata. That command is called psmatch2. psmatch2 is a user written command, so if you do not already have it installed in Stata, you may need to issue the net search psmatch2 command and manually download this command before using it. Once installed, though, you can open your data and I'll walk you through the primary ways to implement psmatch2. So here I have some data from the early childhood longitudinal study, and I will go ahead and open that data. For those not familiar, this is a data set of data on kindergarten children from the 2010-11 school year. As part of the data set, we have information on the early care type, in particular whether they attended Head Start or early, other types of early childhood um, intervention. Additionally, we have a wide set of covariates from survey responses that parents gave, um, information about family income, and so forth. In this example, I'll be using propensity score matching in the PS Match 2 command to look at the relationship between a child attending Head Start and their math score at the fall of kindergarten. And I'll be matching on a series of child covariates that I've created as well as a set of categorical measures of um, family income at the kindergarten year. So to begin with, the syntax of the PS match to command. So the command will be PS match to. Then unlike a regression command, instead of defining your dependent variable, you'll actually first define your independent variable. In this case, I'm using a binary indicator for whether the student attended Head Start. Following that, you'll include the variables that you want to match on. So you might think of these as covariates or control variables in a typical regression framework. Then, as arguments or options with the command, after the comma, you'll say out for outcome, and in parentheses, specify your outcome variable. So here I've specified the standardized math score. And then if you look at the help file for PS Match 2, you can see uh, an array of different options that you can use to specify the type of matching algorithm and different choices about whether you want to use replacement, greedy, or optimal matching, and so forth. Right now I'm keeping it simple, and I just have one argument, which is the word common. And common means that I want to see estimates that are based on common support. And in other words, this will be the area in which there's overlap um, in the propensity scores between those that are treatment in the treatment group and those in the comparison group. So if I highlight that command and execute it, and we look to the output window of Stata, we'll see the first thing it does is run a regression actually predicting the independent variable of Head Start participation. So again, the first step in propensity score matching is to estimate propensity scores. So the PS2 match command has used a probit regression, which is appropriate for binary outcomes to predict whether a child attended Head Start from all of the covariates, the child estimates and the income estimates that I um, provided the PS match to command. Using that command then, it creates propensity scores, or we can think of these again as likelihoods or, or probabilities, for instance, that a student was in Head Start. We see a little bit more output from the PS match to command. Um, at the very bottom, we notice that there's a high level of common support. So only about four observations were off support, which is to say that their propensity scores did not align with the propensity score of another observation in the opposite treatment category. So in large part, we see some evidence of common support. Most importantly, um, to sort of jump ahead a bit, we can see an estimate of the treatment effect, so the average treatment on the treated um, for the treated and the control group, and then the difference being the estimate of Head Start's relationship with standardized math achievement. And the standard error is um, output, so we can see this is just slightly under being statistically significant at the standard 0.05 level. Okay, though, before often in propensity scores that we want to look at the outcome, it's good to evaluate the quality of the match. So I'll show you two different ways that we can do that. The first is to use a command called psgraph, which will graphically evaluate the quality of the match from the psmatch2 command. So psgraph is a command that you can run after psmatch2, and it'll correspond to the most recent psmatch2 estimate run. So here we see the output, and graphically we can see 
um, individuals in the blue that were untreated, individuals in the red that were treated, and um, it's very hard to see, but at the end we have the few people that fell off of common support um, in the treated group. So again, by and large here, we see some evidence of overlap in the propensity scores and some evidence um, that we have a fair bit of common support as previously indicated by the PS match two output. Now graphic um, representations can be nice to look at. They make for pretty pictures in an academic journal article, but they're not quite as precise as using statistical tests. So the second way to evaluate match is to use a third command called PS test. So PS test will be the command name, then you'll specify the variables that you want to check for balance are on. And you'll notice these are the same covariates that I used above in the PS match to command as my matching variables or my covariates. So when I highlight and run the PS test command, I will see output comparing each of these covariates and giving some statistical indicators of whether um, and to what extent bias has been reduced um, and that we have hopefully achieved balance between the treatment and the comparison group. So just to take a, a few examples here, the, the two primary things that I'll see, we have an estimate for the treated group and the control group for, in this case, whether the child is a female. We get an indication of a t-test, so testing the statistical significance between those two estimates. So we can see in this case that it's not statistically significant at the standard 0.05 level. And an indicator of the um, percent bias in this case. So what we're generally looking for, if we're looking for a, a good match or a good balance, is that these t-tests are by and large not statistically significant. In other words, the p-value is above 0.05. And that this percent bias is less than 5% is kind of a traditional threshold. So scrolling through these, I see that we, we have done a pretty good job with this PS match to estimate um, with achieving balance between the observable covariates. So this would allow me to have some faith um, in going back and looking at that treatment estimate, the ATT effect from the PS match to command, and taking that as an estimate of the relationship between Head Start attendance and math achievement um, after matching on the propensity scores from these observable covariates. Now, as I mentioned in the other video, propensity score matching isn't magic. It is limited to matching on observables, so it does not entirely reduce all um, opportunities or threats of selection bias. But it's another nice tool to have in your toolkit, and thanks to the PS match 2 command, it's implemented in Stato without uh, a ton of trouble. Now, as a just brief other thing to mention, well covered in this video, but there is a new command out in Stato called TFX, um, which actually estimates the propensity scores with slightly more accurate standard errors. So um, you may want to also check out the TFX command as an additional way to, to look at propensity scores within Stato. So this concludes the short tutorial on using the PS match 2 command to implement propensity score in Stato. I hope you've enjoyed, and I encourage you to check out other videos in the series for more advice and tutorials on implementing statistical approaches in Stato. Thanks so much.